Hello, greetings friends, good morning, good afternoon, <laughs> good evening, how are you doing today? We are going to have another broadcast here with our friends at Wave and it's all about social video marketing, creating and marketing this week in this three part series. Today is part three and we are going to be talking about video optimization, how to increase the reach of your videos on Facebook using both organic and paid methods. So this is applicable to both recorded videos, videos that you've created and published and uploaded, whether it's stock footage, your own footage, uh, also applicable to uh, live, live videos, okay? So everything I'm gonna teach you in this segment here today is totally applicable to all video. And that is, as we discussed yesterday, it is native, okay? So native video, not sharing a YouTube link on video. Not much point in doing that at all, unless, like I say, the only caveat is you found a great video on YouTube and you can only find it on YouTube and you can't find it on Facebook, then fair enough, go ahead and share that on Facebook. It just won't get anywhere near the reach as when you upload the native video, which you can only do when you own the video. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much. Thanks uh, for your kind words and I'm delighted that you're here. So let's dive in my friends. I've got some slides for you as usual and I'll share my screen. Good morning, yes, good to have you here. So a uh, three part video training, as I said, with myself and partnership with wave.video, my favorite video creation tool. You can go to wave.video, there's no.com there, it's just wave.video and you can sign up for free. They have a fabulous free forever plan and then they also have a really, really easy uh, creator plan that uh, is only uh, $10 a month or 99 for the year. So part three, video optimization, what we're gonna talk about how to amplify reach on Facebook and Mari's ninja tricks for getting the best reach and engagement. Remember, that's what Facebook wants, engagement, meaningful social interaction. That is what Mark Zuckerberg talked about in January of last year. We're almost a year and a half into Zuckerberg's kind of pivot, if you will, to meaningful social interaction. And um, that's a whole other conversation, but uh, it's interesting that apparently Fox News is the number one publisher of content <laughs> in terms of engagement on Facebook. So Facebook's really on a mission to have much more positive, uh, you know, uplifting, if you will. It doesn't have to be uplifting, but it's, you know, I know controversy, people get into all their debates and stuff, but, um, it's just really the the more that we can focus on adding value, especially business. Of, of course, we're my, my audience is business, and, and and I teach marketing skills and, and specifically around the Facebook family of apps, and uh, we want to be able to add value and really uplift when we're doing that best we can. So, oh, a quick recap, because we talked about in part one, video creation. You, I really recommend that you test 15 second videos because they're mobile optimized. You could do Square are great on both Facebook and Instagram, and they are perfect for what Facebook calls ad break. So they appear uh, in the middle or at the beginning of a video. You could do landscape, but you could test uh, Square, but also some vertical. So vertical is perfect for the story format. I have a whole separate training coming up later, um, as soon as possible regarding stories. And then you want to also create videos that are more than three minutes or three minutes or longer. That's what Facebook calls long form video. Long form video is three minutes or more because those are the videos into which Facebook can place the ad breaks and monetize, right? So beginning or during those uh, longer videos. So of course, Facebook Live is a wonderful way to create your three minute or longer videos. I recommend with lives between seven and 20 minutes, longer if you want. Used to be maximum four hours, as I mentioned the other day, it's now changed. You can go live for eight hours, up to eight hours, thanks to the gaming community. <laughs> so that's now available. And, um, but of course you can create videos, uh, published videos, edited videos, doesn't have to be live for three minutes or more. And then yesterday, part two, we talked about video distribution, absolutely implore you to upload natively. It's really going to be, um, very, very minimal reach when you're, when you're uploading, uh, or excuse me, when you're sharing a uh, YouTube link or, or any other video platform, Vimeo or whatever, because Facebook wants you to have the video on their platform. Uh, and then use Facebook Live regularly if you can. I would recommend maybe once a week more if you can. 
And then we talked at length about repurposing videos and sharing them and embedding them, placing them on your blog and taking your, you know, landscape content, making it into square format with the top and bottom bars. They call that letterbox effect. That is really, really popular on uh, square format or on a vertical format. And that's what Wave lets you do is all these formats, one video, many, many formats, click of a button, super duper easy. And so, um, one of the popular formats, if you check out Jay Shetty's watch platform or watch show as uh, just, just, uh, search, uh, Jay Shetty on uh, Facebook. And, uh, he tends to go with the, the vertical format and it's not full on like narrow vertical for nine by 16, which is stories. It is uh, four by five or two by three. And then he'll put a square video here and then a block of uh, text up top and, and then overlay with text overlay at the bottom. Remember 80% of videos, especially video ads are watched with sound off on Facebook. So definitely want to be adding your text overlays and your captions, or if you're doing live, like I'm doing here, you can narrate some slides or you can add overlays. You can add, um, you know, writing in on a uh, like transparent graphic. You can have those pre-made. Um, Okay. So first of all, we're going to talk about increasing your organic reach. I'll give you some tips on that and then we'll switch gears and I'll really dig into some paid reach as well. So recommended ratio. I've been saying this for a little while now, since Facebook's been really all in on video, if you will, it might seem a lot to you at first, but I'm going to recommend about 70% video and work your way up to that. If you're like, Oh my gosh, Mari, I'm only like 10% video right now. That's okay. I don't expect you to overnight go up to 70%, but work your way up to that. Look to see as you're creating content for Facebook, is there a way that you could turn this into a video? And one of the popular ways to do that, for example, is creating a 15 second square video that I call a blog post teaser video. And it just has a couple of excerpts, a couple of key highlights in that video. But the purpose of it is to drive traffic to your website, to your blog post. So that's one way to just real simply create more video content. Um, and then 20% photo and 10% links links get the lowest reach and engagement on Facebook. But to be clear, friends, I keep re reiterating this, but I always knew that there's new people joining and haven't heard this before. So links, you can still put your links and your calls to actions into your video posts and into your photo posts, not in the first comment. I know I see people doing that, but when people share your photo or video and there's a link in the comment, then they don't get that link. Frequency. I actually really, really have seen this with my own page that lasts as more. Um, you, you publish daily if you want minimum once a day for 30 days is a great strategy that will really help to amplify and, and kind of grab onto the algorithms and, and take you up higher, uh, in the feed. If you're posting once a day with, uh, for 30 days video, if you want, but I would still use the ratio here. It doesn't have to be all video, but once a day for 30 days, we'll, we'll trigger the algorithms and, and they see that you're a consistent and a, a more kind of serious, uh, content creator. And that's what F Facebook wants and more, not serious, but more consistent, more committed. Right. But the thing is, um, let's say that right now you're finding that you're not getting as much reach on your post, which pretty much everybody here is, unless you're applying some of these ninja tricks. <laughs> but, um, you know, I've seen some people post like five times a day, or you get those pages that will post 20 times a day and you can just look at their engagement, uh, and, and commit compared to the amount of likes or follows they have. And you know, that must be getting a low reach, uh, because of the engagement. So try dialing it back, post a little bit less instead of five times a day, try, you know, two times a day. Instead of uh, two times a day, do once a day or even, uh, uh, you know, skip a day. Uh, don't be afraid to skip a day or two. So maybe aim for something like five times a week. Okay. So then timing, uh, and you can test this. This is, um, you, you can look, there's a place on your Facebook insights. You can look and see when the people that you reach, uh, or your fans are most often online and you want to publish content when they're online most. Uh, and so that might be business hours, but outside business hours is evenings and weekends, and then maybe even testing a regular show and a, a publication uh, cadence. When I say show, I just, you know, if you're saying, okay, once a week, Tuesdays at three, this is my show kind of thing, or you might just every, every, um, other day at 10, you know, that's when you're going to publish your, your content. And then even more for organic reaches, you could actually, uh, or not even more, but like adding on to all of these tips here encourage your 
audience to put your page on C first and to enable notifications. Okay. Let me hop over to, um, a page here. Uh, let me just go to my own page and, uh, I'll, sh I'll show you what I mean. Uh, you hover over the following. So they, they don't even have to like your page, but if they follow, that's what it is. And I don't know why Facebook did that when you, you got your follows and your likes and oftentimes you'll have more followers than you have likes is, is, is quite normal because people might have unliked your page, but they still follow it, uh, or vice versa. Uh, but they, they've liked your page, which is great. Uh, but follow, you want them to be following your page for sure. And then there's the little C first. And then there's notifications. Now, obviously I don't put my own page on C first cause it's mine. <laughs> uh, but that's what I recommend. Have people go and put C first and turn on notifications. Now what you could do is you could take like a screenshot, go to your page or someone's page and just take a screenshot of this little part here or make a little video tutorial or something like that. Because people don't always know like, what, what does that mean to see, to see first? Um, and on mobile, you know, mobile, it's, it's often just as easy to do that as well. Um, see if I could bring it up right quick. No, probably not. I'll, I'll go back after if I, I don't have it up right this second, but, um, yeah, I don't want to get sidetracked with that, but on mobile there, there's, there's, there's a setting on mobile to do it, uh, as well to put, put to see first. And you've got a whole sec section on your, um, Facebook settings for to kind of go in there and see who you've got and see first. I'm pretty sure it's 20, uh, from memory. Is it 20, 20 people you follow or pages you follow that you can put on C first and uh, it works pretty well. It doesn't always put, you know, absolutely everybody see first. Uh, it's still kind of random. Like I have Mark Zuckerberg and Sheryl Sandberg on C first and a lot of the Facebook pages, but it's still easy to miss things. Cause unless you're on, you look at your feed, you know, multiple times an hour. <laughs> so, um, all right. So that's in organic reach. Let's switch gears now and talk about paid reach. All right. Um, this is what I call my Mari method. I've been teaching for a couple of years now. It's very, very effective. So what you're going to do is start with a great piece of content. And obviously we're talking about video. That's the number one content type that performs best on Facebook, best reach, best engagement. So both recorded video and, and live video. And yesterday we talked about doing uh, premieres or new releases, which is where you can take recorded video and air it, like air it as if it's live. So it starts with a great piece of content that resonates with your audience. Now, if you're doing a live somewhere between seven, 20 minutes, I would do a three minute or more, actually I should put three plus or three minutes or more educational video. Uh, or it could ever, it could just be a 15 second blog post teaser video. These are just, these are just examples. So, um, three different types of video for you. And with the educational video or the blog post teaser video, super easy to make and uh, waved up video. Now, what I recommend is you don't turn it into an ad right away. You give it maybe between one and 24 hours, get some organic reach. And I like it to have some organic reach because you're going to see some natural comments, shares, reactions amongst your audience. And then when you go to apply some budget, it will have some engagement on it. It's not critical, but I, I just like to do that in the feed. So it's not like absolute crickets. You're putting a post out there and there's nothing on it. Of course, when you do dark posts, which are called unpublished, or they're basically ads that, uh, that have not appeared on your wall, then, you know, it doesn't necessarily have any engagement yet, but uh, this is a technique that works really well. Then you don't use the boost button. You use ads manager and it's getting more and more and more complicated. There's so many options. There's so many choices to, you know, make a decision at every, every little decision tree, if you will, you have to decide, uh, what you're going to do with ads manager. Um, and cause they kind of, you know, remember they had power editor and then ads manager was kind of simpler and then they basically merged the two. And, but what's coming and is becoming more popular is Facebook's actually, um, has a system where they do automated ads. You might've seen that at the top of your page. Um, I have this right here. You'll see it. If you're, you're an admin on your page, you probably see it somewhere just at the top of your wall. It'll say, get started with automated ads. And this is fascinating to me because, um, you know, this is just something that's been on the cards for a while because it gets more and more complicated. And Facebook has some amazing AI machine learning. And if, if you give some parameters to the automated ads machine, <laughs> then, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, then, um, you know, they'll, they'll optimize it for you. 
right? And they're saying we suggest images, suggest, they even suggest an audience and a budget to help you get results. You, you decide what kind of results you want. And they're saying, right, save time with less maintenance. Your ads will run continuously. <laughs> Give us money every day. <laughs> so you just hit the get started, pick your ad account and go through that. And then you pick your categorize up to three. Uh, I'm just walking through a couple of these and then select the ways you do business. Is it in person, direct content or online? Uh, and then search for some interest. And this is just, you're giving the machine, the little automated ad machine here, specific, um, parameters from which to create those automated ads. I'm not going to go through this whole thing here, but, uh, it's, it's just a wizard. You just walk through. And if you want to try that, that's certainly one way to get going with ads on uh, Facebook is to uh, let Facebook help you with that wizard. Uh, but I'll do this in a moment. We'll go through and, uh, I'll do an actual demo inside of ads manager. I'm going to finish up my slides first. So use ads manager. And then what I recommend part of the Mari method is you allocate budget in batches. So that means a quick example would be, uh, let's say you literally only had $30, you had $30 or whatever currency is in your country that, uh, you, you take that budget and some people might just literally, cause it's like super easy and Facebook's trying to tempt you to do this as you just hit the boost button and you shove your $30 on there. But if you, if you, if you're a little more mindful and take another couple of more minutes and you go into ads manager and let's say that you choose, um, in this case, video views, video views can be quite inexpensive. Um, and Facebook has this, this methodology that they're doing called through play. And so that's like making sure more people see your video as opposed to just scrolling by and not engaging with it or consuming it. And so then, um, let's say you do a $10 on that and maybe you do a separate ad with, uh, uh optimized for link clicks for $10. Um, or you could come back a few days later and add another $10 if it's performing well in the video views. And the whole thing with ads on Facebook is how important it is to test. You need to be testing, testing, testing. I meet so many people all over the country and the world that have gotten disillusioned and disenfranchised with Facebook advertising because they haven't taken the time to dig in and do testing. You're never going to get magical overnight results just by hitting the boost button and throwing a few dollars in there. It does take a little bit more uh, studying and digging in and then getting some training. Uh, Facebook blueprint is a fabulous educational online, like university, if you will, or college, and you just go to facebookblueprint.com and they're always adding more videos. I'm actually working with the blueprint team on some of their upcoming courses. So, uh, excited about that. Um, so that's the thing, get yourself a little bit of extra help and, uh, dig in cause it really does help. So, uh, use custom audiences in a moment, as I say, I'll go over to my ads manager and we'll do this real time. It's really important to use custom audiences because you're going to be able to maximize the efforts that you are putting into it. So oh, I put that twice. Uh, video engagement is uh, one of the easiest audiences to create. And because I'm recommending a couple of slides ago, I said the ratio is 70% video. Well, ideally you're going to be getting some video views and you start building upon that. Uh, another audience you can do is anybody who has interacted with your Facebook page or your Instagram business account which I recommend switching over. If you're using your Instagram for business at all, switch it over to a business account. Then you can expand any of these audiences with lookalike. So that's you basically saying to Facebook, all right, that's great. I got these people that are engaging with me that are interested in my content, interested in my message, go find me more people like this. All right. And that's the magic of lookalikes. Another whole separate area is uh, when you have the, I think I have this coming up. Yeah. With the pixel, when you put the uh, pixel on your site, oh my gosh, I can't tell you how many, how many folks out there that my partner and I meet all the time. We're doing some agency work for them, doing some done for you, uh, or even just consulting, strategic consulting. And the first thing we see is they don't have the pixel. They don't understand what the pixel is. They don't know what it is or where to put it or, or how it even works. And so that's okay. Listen, if you're in that same boat, I'm here to tell you it's an important part of your marketing efforts. And, and all it is, is a little piece of code and it goes on your website and uh, work with your webmaster to do that. And then when people come to your website, it fires a little cookie and then it gets tracked. So it's, it's anonymized. It's not like Facebook's going to give you the exact identity 
of that person, that audience that is landing on your website or is watching your videos or anything. You never get the identifiable information, but of course Facebook has that and they have it all anonymized and then you can go back and reach them again. That's what's called retargeting. And the reason we do that is because it takes numerous touch points as we call it, right? Numerous touch points for consumers, for people to, whether they're B2C, B2B, for people to make a buying decision. People don't typically, or even not even just buying, just deciding to opt in for free. And they maybe see it, they maybe get distracted, they're not ready to decide, they're just checking it out. And then they see uh, another ad coming up in their feed that's maybe another piece of paid content that's maybe different. It's a different video or it's a different call to action. And you start to nurture that prospect until they've made a decision. And that's the beauty of the Facebook pixel is to just be able to keep uh, top of mind and keep uh, in front of your target audience. And uh, you've all seen that every single person, whether you've ever used the pixel or ever done any custom audiences or ever done any retargeting, you all have been on the receiving end of retargeting. And that's when you've gone to a website and if you looked at something to buy, a piece of jewelry, a camera, and, dress, shoes, watch, <laughs> car, whatever it is that you're buying online. And then, I mean, Amazon is really good at this, right? And so many other sites too, that the very thing you were just looking at, uh, starts stalking you, starts following you around, around Facebook or often around the whole, a uh, whole, uh, internet. Um, now then this would be a good place to talk real quick about the clear history, which was just announced yesterday that the clear history a year over a year after Facebook first said they were going to do it, it kept getting delayed and Facebook wants to absolutely do it right. But, uh, consumers, which includes all of us here will at some point in the coming months, be able to click a button and clear that tracking history. And periodically you might want to do that periodically, uh, frankly, it will make a difference to your ad targeting. So, um, so that's on the consumer end, but on the marketing end, uh, many of us are going, Oh no, we don't want the clear history feature. <laughs> we want to be able to track our people, but the thing is that we want it fresh. We want it accurate. We want to be able to reach people that want to do business with us. Right friends. So, um, let me know if you've got questions on that. Uh, oops, so, so this next slide is talking about cre uh, custom audiences. One sec. This is exactly what it looks like. I gave you a screenshot of this one because I wanted to really, um, just highlight a couple things. I, I highlighted in red down here in this bottom right, where it says this process is secure and the details about your customers will be kept private. Cause I know that some folks are very reticent about that. I work a lot in the finance industry. I've also done work in the healthcare industry and both industries are highly, highly regulated. And I know that, um, some folks can get a little squeamish about uploading a database of email addresses to like a customer file. That's this one here. We didn't even talk about that, but that's where you can upload your email addresses or phone numbers or any identifiable information, upload it to Facebook and go find me, my customers on Facebook so I can retarget them or I can uh, create a custom audience out of them, which is one of the best custom audiences, uh, or lookalike, I should say a lookalike based on your existing customers, but it's hashed. The data is hashed. It's encrypted. It's totally, um, secure. Now then, as I mentioned, one of my favorite custom audiences is this one right here called video video custom audiences. This would be another one. Anyone who's ever interacted with your Facebook page, uh, and there's your Instagram business profile. You could do that. Uh, and then there's the pixel one with the website traffic. So you have to have the pixel installed to be able to create that custom audience. All right. And you can do other ones, but those are the main four, uh, increase engagement. So actually let's do this. Let's switch gears now and, uh, I'll pull up my, um, ads manager. We'll go in and do that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, yeah, perfect. looking for my mute button. I hope I clicked it. <laughs> okay. So let's do this I'm gonna hop over and, uh, and get this set up for you and then we'll jump right in. Perfect. First of all, I'll do the audience and then I'll do the ad. Uh, that's that. Now, depending on whether you use a business manager or ads manager, it'll, it'll look slightly different, but similar, but different. Um, okay, perfect. There you go. 
audiences. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen now. You're gonna look at my own business manager and uh, you're just gonna go up to this little guy on the top left is called a hamburger, the three little lines. It is a technical term, <laughs> the hamburger. And then you've got slide over there and you've got all of these different options here. And then you've got your frequently used over here. So audiences is right here. Uh, it's under assets, the first one under assets. Um, but you just click on audiences that'll get you to this page here. And then you're going to go create audience. And then there's custom lookalike or saved. I know it's quite small writing on the screen, especially if you're watching on mobile right now, but uh, let's see what we can do here. If we click into custom audiences, this is where you'll see, this is what I had as a screenshot in my, my uh, slides a minute ago. I'm going to go into video, click video. And the first thing it's going to ask me now, I think I can zoom a little bit is uh, the engagement. So it's going to say the type of content. So you, as soon as you click into that, it gives you this drop down with choices. Now the default on Facebook is three seconds of your video. That's all it takes to count as a view on Facebook. Do you guys know what it is on YouTube? It's much longer. And this is, you know, this is what folks say. It's actually 30 seconds, 30 seconds to count as a view on YouTube. It's only three on Facebook. Isn't that amazing? But I might recommend you go for 10 seconds, which means people really have, you know, they're more than just kind of a drive by <laughs> or a flyby or a thumb swipe by. So if 10 seconds, I'd go maybe for minimum, but depending on the length of your video, you might go at 25%, 50, 75 or 95. Those are amazing captive audiences. Imagine you did a, even a 10 minute video and you select an audience of people that watch 95%. That's amazing. Let's go 10 seconds for now. And then in here with them, um, choose videos. It'll come up and it'll say choose video. So that's where I want to go. You're going to grab the right page that you want. Here we go. Um, and then it's going to actually show you, well, this is the video we're, we're doing right now. It's why it's showing no views. We're not, we're not finished that video yet. <laughs> so let me see, I'm going to grab uh, this one and this one and this one. And that's it. Cause you can, you can put multiple ones in here. Let me just say, I'm going to do the last, you know, few, few weeks of, uh, uh, videos that I did hit confirm on that. So now I'm going to go, I've got uh, what, six videos, uh, 10 seconds or more and uh, give it a name and hit create audience and off it goes. It'll create that for you. Okay. So that's, uh, I really encourage you to, to, um, experiment with the different sizes, the lengths of time, the num the videos, how recently, so on and so forth. And you create the audience and then you can reach that audience with a different piece of content. And maybe you try, um, a link ad or a lead ad or a call to action with to message you ad different types of uh, ad formats, but uh, you could totally do another video. All right. So this is going to really help. And the cool thing, by the way, with my Mari method is that uh, your organic reach will go up when you give Facebook even a little wee bit of money, a dollar a day on a post, and you'll see your organic reach. I know it's kind of kind of a counterintuitive. It's like, wait a minute, I get more organic reach when I give Facebook money. Yep. But that's how it works. <laughs> that's what I found uh, time and again. Um, okay. So then let's close out of there and then I'm going to go and, uh, I'll share my screen again in a moment and I'll just, I'll just show you exactly how I would boost a video post. I'm just going to hit the, the create, um, uh, button there. Okay, perfect. So now we're in actual ads manager. So if I, hit, I hit the create the green create button and that brings me here. And, um, those of you that are super ninjas with ads already, this is probably very basic for you. Some of you might be doing quick creation, but for those of you who are kind of new to ads or, or ads manager, maybe you're using the boost button a lot, but after today, I would love for you to dig in and really, uh, try to use ads manager. Cause you're, you're just going to get more options and, and better results. So the one I'm going to choose is video views. And the first thing is you want to give it a name. Um, I'm just going to test for right now. And, uh, Facebook recently moved where the budget is. The budget is actually going to sit right here under your campaign level. You can do it daily. It could be a dollar a day, $10 a day. Uh, they default to daily, but you could also do lifetime. Okay. And then I recommend for right now, you're just going to leave all the defaults because there's lots more things you can do in here. Uh, if you wanted to do a lifetime budget, you could, uh, you could, uh, uh, run ads, um, on a schedule. Yeah. Lifetime budgets. Uh, but for right now, just go with the defaults, um, and just make sure on the money side of things, that's where you're happiest. It's got the exact budget that you want, 
for the day or for the lifetime. And you can see over here on the left, these are kind of just real simple, like a filing cabinet, if you will. Those are the drawers, those are the file folders, and they're locked until you've chosen your objective. You have to choose, choose one of these objectives uh, of what you wanna accomplish. All right, real quick, hop over here, and uh, you'll see where the Facebook's really making a big deal of this. They've just recently put this out. Throughplay is now the default optimization for campaigns using the video views objective and uh, you can change it in budget and selection, uh, budget and schedule. So I'm gonna recommend you, again, you stick with Facebook's defaults. That's what's gonna happen anyway if you begin using that automated, uh, um, the automated ads. So in here, we've got your custom. If we click into here and it'll start to bring up, uh, there's like an engagement uh, video audience. I was doing uh, some demos the other day recently. Lots of different ones in here. These are all, you could, there's your lookalikes if you've created some already, your customs, uh, or you can grab a saved audience that you've already made. And so, or you can build a new one. All right, so that's, I'm not gonna go too deep into audiences right now or creating them. Then placements, just leave as default. If you really want to, you can get into edit. Let's say that you're doing a stories ad. Um, you can go ahead and just select uh, stories on, let's say it's stories on Instagram or stories on Facebook, you deselect everything else and you just leave it selected. But otherwise, when you're on the default automatic, you're advertising in stories anyway. Okay, so you just come on down here, you're gonna leave the defaults. I would just recommend leaving that for now, it's just not too advanced for right now. But then the main thing I want to, to show you is how you actually grab a post that you've already made. Instead of using the boost button, you're gonna hit use existing post. It's not really terribly obvious, it really isn't. So, cause they want you to start from scratch and create an ad, right? But if you go use existing post, then, um, and your Instagram account's already connected, that's great. And then it's right here, select post. And there are all your video posts and it gives you a little orange triangle if it's gonna, sh it's gonna show you like if anything's, uh, 15 seconds or more, it can't be used as a in-stream, you know, ad break, or if it's 60 seconds or more, it can't be used on Instagram. If it's, uh, but you can do longer videos, slightly longer in store as stories ads now. Okay, so let's just take, uh, I think that was the one, that was the one I did yesterday. So I'm just gonna take that one, hit continue. And then you'll see it populate over, over on the right as the mobile newsfeed, um, Preview, you've got all the different previews here and see what it looks like on desktop. And then you can also add a button, which I highly recommend you do. You call it action button, put what you want in there and put your URL with your call to action. And then uh, you've got your pixel already installed. That's what you're gonna do there. And, um, and once you've got your audience, then I would hit review. I didn't put my audience in yet, but obviously I'd have to do that. Hit review, make sure everything's the way you want it and then hit confirm. Now that was like a rapid crash course on, ads manager, but a couple of key areas to know there is initially when you're selecting your video views, uh, I find that one of the easiest um, objectives to start with. And, and then also adding that call to action button to your video posts as in your lives as well, once you're done with your live. The cool thing is that you've seen it before and then it, whenever you see a video ad, it's gonna have that the right below all across the bottom is that people can click that and it goes to the link that you want them to go to. All right, now if you've got any questions at all, I'm gonna catch your questions at the end, anything at all, happy to answer that uh, for you. Um, hopefully all that made sense. And then I'm gonna finish up my slides here and then I'll get to your questions. So that was all increasing paid engagement, long segment increasing paid engagement, uh, paid, paid reach, excuse me, paid reach. <laughs> so this one is now uh, engagement. First of all, I mean, you really, really experiment and test, making sure that you're creating what uh, Facebook calls thumb stopping. You know, 90% of Facebook users use uh, or access Facebook on their mobile devices or thumb, thumb, thumb. Oh, what was that? Thumb, scroll, 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 or maybe use your index finger. <laughs> scroll, 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 scroll. Oh, what was that? It catches people's attention. It jumps out of the screen. It's got uh, compelling visuals. It's got, if you're doing a live, you want to have good lighting, good audio, good, um, camera if possible. Um, you can go get all that, the, the gear that I use at mariasmith.com forward slash video kit. Okay, mariasmith.com forward slash video kit. I'll pop that in for you later, but that, uh, that'll show you all the, the gear that I use uh, with, along with some great tips. 
So eye catching, thumb stopping, compelling content, shareable, and then you can encourage comments. And let me give you some tips because there's a whole other new caveat around this area as well, isn't there? You want to ask open-ended questions, open-ended questions, not saying, you know, uh, comment below necessarily, but just ask questions, ask for feedback, uh, invite that feedback. And this can be both written and spoken. You can add a poll or a survey. You could just do that real time during a live, or as I showed you in yesterday's training, there, there is a, um, a place inside of Facebook. When you go to upload a video, you can now overlay a poll onto your video and that could be added into a video that you've uploaded, or you could go back after you've done a Facebook live and you could add a poll, or you can actually, when you schedule your lives, you, you can actually put polls. I haven't done this myself yet, but you can add a real time poll, uh, while you're live, which is pretty cool as well. Great for engagement. Perhaps you could connect with a messenger bot, some great messenger bot strategies out there. And Facebook's just getting a little bit tighter with their messenger chat bot strategy, which is great in terms of you have to get permission at the page level. Your page has to apply to be approved to send broadcasts to the people who have opted into your messenger and uh, whoever messaged you. But there's some cool things you can do with that with like comment triggers. Uh, you can check out mobile monkey, mobilemonkey.com or many chat. Uh, both of them are great chatbot apps and you can do things like ask people to comment with a specific phrase and then you can uh, message them with, with a special offer. Now then, this is what I'm saying. Be careful here when you're asking for engagement because Facebook now demotes, meaning gives less reach to videos that have engagement bait, which I'll explain in a second, uh, in the written, right? The description Ah, now what's fairly new is the audio. So, uh, you can imagine that anytime Facebook has any, you know, specific rules or their algorithms and there's always folks going to try to game the system. And so, um, they now, because they have all this, they're able to transcribe our videos. So obviously they're listening to the audio of our videos, uh, the AI is anyway. And so if there are trigger words in your audio of your video, then, uh, they're asking, you know, point blank for engagement in a certain way, then Facebook's going to know that and start demoting that. So this is what I'm going to, uh, recommend. So Facebook's actually demoting videos, uh, with engagement bait. They updated their engagement bait policy just last month. And they're saying, uh, videos that contain written or spoken phrases such as now here, I'm going to go, I'm going to actually say these, say, say these, well, actually the thing, I think if I, if I did, if I just put them up on my slide and I don't say them, then maybe that'll help. So not that phrase, not that phrase, <laughs> not that phrase <laughs> or any direct call to action tied to that, that, or that. <laughs> No, that's funny because when Faith, I'm laughing, but it's not really funny. Um, the thing is that Facebook's, they just, they just always trying to stay one step ahead of the opportunists out there who game the system, right? Game the algorithms. And you can imagine that people were hopping on live and just, uh, like really going crazy with those phrases and, and trying to get accelerated reach when maybe it wasn't natural, wasn't authentic. And so, uh, Facebook wants us to really, you know, have natural and authentic engagement and that pertains to all video live or uploaded. Um, okay. So now actually we're going to review creator studio before I do the summary and, uh, catch any of your questions. So look at the metrics and identify your top performing videos. What is creator studio? Let me hop back over here and we'll pull up my page again. Um, let me go like this, open all these tabs and if you go inside of, um, uh, is it publishing tools? Yeah. Publishing tools. Yeah. Uh, and everybody has that. You've got publishing tools and then you may or may not have this. I, I'm not sure if this is for everybody right now, but, but if it is, then if it's not, then you've got your insights, go, go to your insights tab and you can get all, all kinds of great things there, but otherwise go to manage all your posts in creator studio. You'll see that it says, try it now. Uh, okay. It's just facebook.com slash creator studio. And if you're on business manager, then it'll be business.facebook.com slash creator studio. So what you're going to see in here, uh, it's landed by default on my content library there. If you've got numerous pages, choose the page that you have or the business manager you have, 
and, and you can see just a little, a lot more detail in here, a lot more detail that, uh, you wouldn't normally be able to see just under insights. Um, they've got even like monetization and whether it's cross posted or not, whether it was boosted or not, you know, all kinds of things. Um, and then, uh, but, but what I would recommend is go into your insights. So the insights is really fascinating to me because they've got things like total minutes viewed minutes viewed, organic, own, paid, and then you've got all your videos, top videos, and you can sort these. Let's say I want to sort that by engagement, but right now I'm only looking at the last seven days. Let me say that I wanted to go this quarter. I want to see all my videos from this quarter and I'm going to sort by, uh, I got minutes viewed. I can see, wow, look at that one. This was cross posted with wave. I know we were both doing some ad budget on this one. So that's got my most minutes viewed. But let's say I sort by engagement. I can see in the last quarter, my number one most engaged video was uh, a four minutes and 35 seconds. And it's uh, when Facebook was testing the merged newsfeed and stories format that got a lot of a, a lot of um, engagement. And and I can I sort by this. Yeah, and I can sort by three second <clears throat> video views. Excuse me. Uh, Okay, good. Yeah. So that, so my uh, zoom that I did with Daniel on wave that still comes out tops with the number of three second video views, but then that, uh, that square video, uh, that I, where I was narrating the, um, merged newsfeed and stories that came out top. So this is just really, really helpful, informative. And the thing is that Facebook's looking for you to, uh, be able to gear up to monetize your videos. And it's going to show you some tips in here too. increase your distribution, dive deeper, grow your audience. Uh, loyalty is another tab here. I rather like to check out. And so that's going to show you because this is one of the factors. Facebook wants people who keep coming back to watch your videos. And I don't mind you seeing these stats. It's going to show you returning viewers, uh, complete views, net followers, um, returning viewers each month, how long people are watching. Now, if you have shorter videos, they're probably going to be, you know, as cause it's complete views. And if I'm doing an hour long Facebook live, that's going to be low for everybody. There's not too many people will sit through and, and a long, not sit through, but you know what I mean? If you're <laughs> depending on what you're doing with your stats, you got summary there, you got trends, you got percentages, lots of great detail in here, which uh, I really recommend that you check out for facebook.com slash creator studio. If you do not have that yet, if you're watching from a country that's maybe not rolled out to yet, or maybe it's specific pages, I'm not entirely sure, but uh, just some really, really nice, nice dashboard. I really like the way they've laid it out. Um, and then you've got also your, let me just show you this one is, uh, the monetization tab, because this is where Facebook wants to get to with more of us, more of us content creators is the exactly like YouTube does monetizing, monetizing. So to be able to share the revenue, um, is it 60% off the top of my head? It's 60% or 55%. It's the higher percentage that, uh, that we get as a content creator. And so, but you have to have like, um, 30, what's off the top of my head? It's like 30,000 views in the last, uh, of videos that are three minutes or longer in the last 60 days. So, um, I don't know. I just find, even though it says that I'm eligible right there, uh, I don't think I, I don't think I am. I haven't, I'm not in, not monetizing my videos through ads yet. Uh, video ad monetization. There's a separate page you can look up. Oh yeah. I'm going to show you this and it says, see if you qualify. Let me go like this. So now I'm going to show you this one. All right. So this one is facebook.com slash business slash join ad breaks, whatever. Or I just, I just literally Googled, look what I Googled Facebook video ad monetization and, and it pops up right there. So Facebook video ad monetization, and then you'll go to this and you select the page and it will show you, you need uh, 10,000 followers and you need one minute, you, uh, excuse me, you need 30,000. I, I did get it right. 30,000 one minute views on videos that are at least three minutes long in the last two months. So you can see that Facebook wants those longer form videos. They want uh, sustained viewership, uh, because it's the only way that they can pop ads in there. Right. And, and, and monetize. So. Um, anyway, when you identify your top performing videos, that's what you want to do more of. See what's resonating with your audience. Look at performance and loyalty, as I showed you there. Quick summary. You want to publish about 70% of your content as videos, if possible, work your way up to that. If it's a, if that's a big stretch for you, just, uh, start to switch gears and do a little more video and use a terrific platform like wave.video, which gives you 20 million royalty free assets. That's pretty amazing. You get about one and a half million of those in the free plan, which is awesome. 
Encourage natural engagement, spark conversation, invite feedback. Don't use those trigger phrases, which we can't say now because Facebook's listening. <laughs> and use my Mari method where you go into ads manager, you're gonna do custom audiences, video views, you'll use the, definitely put the pixel on, that's not unique to me, everybody should be doing that. But the methodology is uh, taking the video views, custom audience, and then dropping in your um, budget in batches and uh, um, doing your special calls to action and whatnot, doing your custom audiences. Okay, I think, uh, oh, and monitor your insights. I, I added a fifth one for you. So monitoring your insights. Outstanding, thank you so much for being here today. This has been an absolute joy to do this uh, series for you this week uh, in conjunction with my partners at wave.video. And you can go back and catch part one and part two if you didn't already. And uh, so, um, Love it. And now I'm going to go ahead and check out any of your comments or questions, I should say. Nancy Alexander in the house. You guys should definitely check out Nancy. She is a beautiful expert in making wreaths, ladybug wreaths. You can find her on Facebook at ladybug wreaths and she has a highly engaged community. So much so that Facebook actually reached out to her and, and uh, she, she started to work a little bit with some of the Facebook teams. <laughs> That's funny, Kim, yeah. Let me know your thoughts, right? Exactly. Let me know your thoughts. Got any questions? <laughs> I've seen some people like hold up signs, right? <laughs> uh, that's interesting, Adam. I'm not aware of that. I should definitely, I should definitely check that out. You are welcome, Soy Mia. Suryanaranya. What a great name. Wonderful. Yeah, thanks for that, Adam. I will definitely check that out. Um, oh, hi, Anita. Yeah, she's using uh, Creator Studio a lot. That's awesome. It's really done a good job. It's even the visual layout. It's, it's real pretty. It's not like sometimes you go to dashboards and they just make your head go crazy because it's like hard to even interpret. But Facebook's, Facebook's done a nice job with that. Uh, let's see what Sherry's saying. Uh, hi, Sherry. Come in the house. I know this is about video, but what about other Facebook posts that businesses do for contests? Yeah. Uh, that's a really good point, Sherry. Uh, yeah, yeah, because that's part of what Facebook calls engagement bait. They've, they've supposedly been demoting those kinds of posts for, actually it was 2017 when they first brought out the whole engagement bait algorithm. Uh, and those are, those two are definitely uh, part of it. Yeah, you are not allowed to say share or tag friends in, uh, uh, for contests in order to enter a contest. It is against Facebook policy, but I don't know Sherry and everybody. I just think that they really, they really struggle to, you know, enforce some of their own rules. Uh, so I think that's really what happens there. And it's not fair, is it? Because, uh, because, um, if we, you abide by the rules, but you see other folks that are not, and it's like, you know, no fair. Oh, Claire has a good, a good question. Are those phrases banned on Instagram? Not really because they're, that's a good question. You know, it's not that they're banned. Okay. Just so you know, it's not, it's not they're banned. You can say them. And even if you said them like just organically and naturally, what Facebook's trying to do is to, to just lower the reach of content creators that are just trying to game the system. Because another one is, which we talked about yesterday, is originality. They want original content. Facebook's trying to lower the reach of videos that are scraped clips of YouTube videos used without permission and then published on Facebook and end up getting millions of views. And the creator, the original owner of the content, seems to have no recourse. And uh, that's definitely not fair. So Facebook's really trying to you know, um, deal with that. And it's just tricky for them, if you will, because, you know, Facebook wants lots of video views, but they also want to make sure they're honoring the correct content creators. Hi, Julie. Yeah, I think, uh, I don't know what, what point you asked that question, but examples of how we can, you ask just, uh, if you've got any questions, let me know, uh, What's your feedback? What's your thoughts on this? Depending on what you're teaching, you know, how, how has this made you feel? What challenges have you faced? Um, you know, what are, what are some of your favorite books? Uh, which mentors are you studying with now? I'm just making these up, but just like open-ended questions or just a question you could ask a yes, no, you know, 
What city are you from right now? What time is it in your time zone right now? Those are fun questions to to get more engagement on a, a live while you're live. Uh, but there's definitely definitely um, some good things to do. All right, friends. Just scanning, seeing if there's any other anything else. Adam, you're asking is YouTube count minutes? I don't know. I know that they do. Uh, I don't know. I'm not as up on YouTube video, um, but I, I'm pretty sure a view is uh, 30 seconds, like like minimum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And Adam, another good point here. So clear history. When I was talking about clear history, and I, I put this on my post yesterday, that it's cleared on the user end. And this is for Facebook too. You're saying on Google, but um, when you go, when Facebook brings this out for everybody and you clear history, that means that Facebook can no longer I um, t target ads for you based on your cookies. Uh, but they still have the data. They have the data. It's always anonymized and they also can pass that along to whoever uses it. It's not identified to you though. Yeah, it's cleared. Yeah, it's com it's not completely cleared at Facebook. No, and I, and that's the interesting thing, Adam. I know, I know. It is really, it's really interesting. I was reading a post. I put it. I put it. I put a comment out on my page yesterday about this because uh, um, I think there's probably some confusion, and I and we were having lots of great discussions in various groups, and and I doubt, highly doubt that Facebook's going to make it like really, really obvious and going, hey, everybody, and put it at the top of your feed. Want to clear your history? Here's how you do it. <laughs> and you know, I love Facebook, but there's areas where it's just, that's just how it's going to be. Um, this is, this is really fascinating. So I was, I did a poll yesterday, uh, and we've had 565 votes, which is not bad. So it's about 50, 50 so far, right? Leaning more, more towards folks saying they'll clear their Facebook history. But I gave them those two choices saying prefer targeted ads. You can still, you're still going to get targeted ads, whether you clear your history or not. But uh, to Adam's point, um, the feature doesn't actually delete a user's browsing activity. Let's zoom in that in so you guys can read it better. Um, uh, I lost my place. Here we go. Doesn't actually delete a user's browsing activity or offline actions. It simply makes the data anonymous. This is one from Facebook. If you clear your history or use the new setting, we'll remove identifying information so a history of the websites and apps you've used won't be associated with your account. We will still provide apps and websites with aggregated analytics. That's all, aggregated analytics. So I think it's better than nothing, that's for sure. <laughs> um... And Annalisa, what a pretty name. She said, I read that Facebook will be bumping longer videos to higher up, better reach in the algorithm. Does this mean shorter videos will now get less reach? And it, there's so many factors and it's not just black and white. It really isn't because you could get a shorter video that has tons of engagement and an, another signal is speed of engagement. Let's say somebody publishes a post and it instantly starts getting some comments, shares, likes, uh, private messages, whatever, instantly starts getting engagement. That's a signal that will accelerate it up the news feed, no matter the length of the video. But some other factors are what Facebook's saying, like originality. They can tell is it original content. Another sig a signal that's just quite new is called click gap. And that is, let's say you have a post that has a link in it, no matter what the type of post, link post, photo, video, and it has a link in it. And all of a sudden it starts getting accelerated reach. Uh, and people are sharing it really fast around around the uh, Facebook world. Uh, and this click gap signal, it'll go out and it looks out onto the internet and goes, uh, wait a minute, this link has very little activity outside of Facebook. It's not that popular, not that many inbound links pointing to it. Uh, we're gonna start demoting that because, and it's no fair, right? But it's a signal that Facebook's looking to see, uh-oh, is this potentially, a piece of fake news or something that's uh, a gamed system has been gamed. Uh, maybe there's a whole bunch of, what do they call them? Um, shared sharing ladders or something. I'm not even up on all that cause it's not, I don't pay attention, but there's like messenger groups or whatever chat groups where people say, okay, I'm, I'm going to publish this link. Everybody go in and share it. 
or groups. There's even groups that do that. And there's legit ones. I'm not downplaying that because there's legit ones. But the ones that, again, those bad actors that are trying to game the system. And so that's what Facebook's, all these different components, right? So it's not as black and white. Um, but but they definitely are, I will confirm on the Annalisa that they're, Facebook's definitely looking for longer videos, which is three minutes or more. That doesn't mean go live for eight hours. <laughs> you can if you want. I've been going long on this one. My goodness, 55 minutes, but that's okay. I, I love hanging out with you guys and answering your questions. Um, oh, beloved Kate, I just love your name. So you can go to marismith.com forward slash video kit. So that's free uh, video gear list. All right, friends, I'll put that in there for you, Kate. You're so welcome, Annalisa, yeah. Did you guys know that uh, a person's first name is the sweetest sounding word in their entire vocabulary? I love to get people's names right in the pronunciation. It's not always easy on, on when you're on uh, online to uh, get someone's name right. Uh, if you're not sure the pronunciation, I can't tell you how many people keep call me Marie or Mary, but it's Mari. Mari rhymes with Ferrari. <laughs> uh, Dahi is saying, could you recommend split video custom audience to more segment, deepen on watching duration or percentage of video? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean, you split video custom. Yeah, you could. You could make as many custom audiences as you want from one video. You could. You could absolutely segment. Yep. Definitely, you could do one for, okay, these are the 10, you could do all videos for three seconds. That's that's gonna be the biggest catch all. And then you could go, all right, let's do, let's say it was a 10 minute video and you go, okay, 50%, right? You're gonna catch everybody that's watched five minutes. So I think that's pretty awesome. It's a great way to go. And then do some lookalikes on that. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny, Adam. In Facebook, we have to trust, indeed. <laughs> Oh, Camille, I love this question. All right, this will be my last question. Camille's asking, how can you use a watch party to gain traction on your original post? So that's where I'm gonna recommend, let's say you have a Facebook group um, and you have, or you have your top fans, you have your, maybe you have affiliates, you have joint venture partners, and you wanna teach them, you wanna actually empower them and um, teach them how they can gain more they can gain more visibility with their audience using your content using your video and that doesn't have to be that way this is just one utilization of watch parties i'm suggesting and so let's say someone let's you have say you have a joint venture partner and then you've given them a unique jacking link for an offer you've made and they host a watch party in their group or on their page the thing is that you're not going to be alerted necessarily. We talked about this yesterday. Someone asked that question, but you don't get alerts when uh, someone's using your video as a watch party or hosting it, I should say. Um, and also all the engagement goes with that watch party. So you wouldn't necessarily be aware of all the, any comments or something like that. But I would just say, I would, the first thing is getting over the educational hurdle because it's amazing how many people are just not sure what a watch party is, what it does. We're seeing the button everywhere. You see a video on mobile or desktop and it'll say, you know, use this video in a watch party or share this with your friends in a watch party. And uh, people are like, what does that mean? I don't know if I should press that button. What's gonna happen when I press it? Um, but I, but just to practice, give it some practice yourself. Get really super familiar with how watch parties work. And uh, I've done a few on my profile. I did one around New Year's and I was hosting actually the, like the Edinburgh New Year's um, torchlight procession with the bagpipes and everything. It was amazing. And I couldn't believe how, how much traction it got instantly with, in the feed. And I saw, I saw some of my Facebook friends I had not seen in years were suddenly popping onto that watch party. So I knew that Facebook was giving it some extra reach in the feed, which is, which is definitely a good thing. All right, and, and indeed, if they tag you, that would be a thing to do is, is have, have the people uh, tag you. Good point, Adam. All right, I must go. Wonderful being with you, friends. So uh, this has been a fabulous three-part series brought to you in partnership with my friends at Wave.Video. Make sure you go and get an account, totally free, Wave.Video, or upgrade to the creator, super, super reasonable prices, and you can create lots and lots of beautiful professional videos and post them across all social networks. Have a blessed rest of your day, morning, evening. We'll see you again real soon. Bye for now.